one of the topics that I talk about with my friends a lot is just getting new clients and marketing. And um, I just thought it'd be a good topic to like open up the discussion to a, a bigger audience in different markets. Um, and I can kind of tee things off with just kind of setting the, the pace for the call. Just talk. Essentially what I'm hoping to do is just share ideas, share things that we've all done. And this is more, this is more architecture and design focused and less real estate focused. The last few calls have been very real estate focused and there's nothing wrong with that, but I, I wanted to have something that was a little more geared specifically towards architecture um, just because. So that said, I think feel free to chime in, ask questions. Um, I'm not going to be like talking or lecturing the whole time. I'm just kind of going to help facilitate things and move things along. I know that Steve and Andrew, um, I've talked with them quite a bit on marketing strategies. We, we talk regularly, but I'll, like I said, I'll kind of kick it off. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's a million different marketing things I, I've done to like get new business. But uh, the one thing, just to back up a little bit. So I, for those of you who don't know, I actually moved to Nashville from Minneapolis area back in January and essentially started over from scratch. And that's what this whole open book club is. I'm like documenting that, that process, like what I'm doing to get new business. But the, um, the, the, of all the things that I've ever done in marketing, this is the one time I can honestly say SEO has gotten me all the business that I've, that I've gotten within two weeks of moving here. I had one of my highest paying jobs ever. I had a few other jobs. I, I've had a total of like six or seven jobs that have come through just from SEO alone. People are finding me through Google searches. And one of the things that I did, <clears throat> let's see, Steve's in Monticello, Minnesota. Cool. One of the things that I did before, probably like six months, six months, to, six to eight months before I moved here is I switched my website to WordPress. Uh, I was using the Squarespace at the time. Um, mainly just because Squarespace was simple to use. Um, and, I, and I was getting decent SEO in Minnesota. I would show up on page one or two, depending on the search results that you, that you, that you did. But it took me a couple of years to get there. And with Nashville, I kind of went all out. I spent like almost two straight days just working on SEO alone. There was a podcast I, I, I started listening to called Fuel Your Photos. Um, it's these two former photographers who specialize in search engine optimization and their podcast was super informative. And I basically just followed all the steps that they suggested. And within three days, I was actually the day after I launched my site for Nashville, I was the first, I was the first search result. Um, and then I screwed something up and I went down to like page 14 and then I had to like fix it and recover it. And I went back up to page one. Um, so, and I can talk and I can talk a little bit in detail on how I did that, but I, it's just, it's the, it's the only time. Cause like, even when I was in Minnesota, the four years I was trying to market myself as an architecture photographer, I just wasn't getting any business. I, I was getting some business, but it was all from me reaching out to people and it was proactive. Literally every single job that I've gotten here in Nashville. Has, and in fact, I'm here in Nashville right now, shooting one that I got that they just called me last week. Um, and it's all from, from search engine optimization. They just found me on a Google search, asked for a, a quote, and I, I got the bid. So I don't want to, I don't want to ramble too long. I can go into any detail if anybody wants to ask any questions about that. Um, or if anybody I, wants I, to, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I was kind of curious about, um, I, I recently moved markets as well. So it's been a shift for me trying to rebrand, you know, relocate myself. I'm still doing a lot of works in the Denver area, which is where I was from. So a lot of my projects still are up in Colorado, but we moved back to New Mexico to be closer to family, but it's not exactly a uh, big architectural market. So it's been harder to find clients. What my question for your SEO is what type of clients are you getting through the SEO results? Are you landing more architectural firms. I feel like most firms tend to already have a roster, um, but you know, are they or are they just realtors and local, you know, businesses? That's a really good question. So that and this is something I've also discovered over the years. And, and Steve, you, you and Andrew can probably back me up on this, but <clears throat> I've no architecture firms have hired me directly, except for one. 
through search engine optimization. It's, it's usually like a PR firm, the business itself, they need like office photography or something. Um, or like, I think three of the people who have called have been a PR firm. The one I'm at right now, it's a hotel in Nashville. Um, the developer for this hotel contacted me directly. They're, they're, they're marketing guy. So yeah, so so I've only but the only there's only one architecture firm who's who's contacted me, and that is also in Nashville, and that will be. The, but they're an architecture firm from from Greenville, South Carolina, so a few hours away from here. Um, they specialize in churches, like these modern churches across the country. So they have hired me to go shoot one of their churches in Nashville. Um, yeah, but otherwise, and, and that was kind of a, he, he told me straight, like right off the bat, like I've got, I do have like three other photographers I'm reaching out to. So I wasn't like exclusive or anything, but I was just one in a group of people who, who put in a bid and got the job. Hey, Jordan, I'll, I'll piggyback off just one thing that you said, which is switching from Squarespace to WordPress. Um, I can't recommend that enough to anybody who is using Squarespace or any one of those kind of like plug and play build sites. They're, they're great. They're simple. They're really easy to use, but they're not going to, especially if you're in a larger market with, with competition, it's not going to get you to the first one to six people. And if you're not one of the first one to six people, you know, the people who are searching probably aren't going to do it. So WordPress just gives you so many more options and customizations on the back end. Um, you know, similar to, to Jordan, I moved from Colorado to Atlanta um, about five years ago, and um, I was struggling for business for a little bit. And as soon as I switched my um, website from Squarespace to WordPress, I jumped up the rankings pretty significantly. So definitely worth the investment whether you outsource it or figure it out yourself um, to, to make that switch. Did you uh, kind of bouncing off of Sam's question? Did you, um, are, are the majority of people contacting you? Or are they architects or are you getting a lot of PR firms and marketing firms contacting you? Yeah, it's, it's usually like it, I, the only, the most of my architecture clients were through referrals or kind of like piggybacked off of, um, other, you know, they, they bought a license through, through another project, you know, through a different client. Um, but yeah, I mean, mostly it's, you know, like I said, kind of like a random PR person or the marketing person for the office space or, or something like that. But again, it, it's business and it hopefully leads to more business. It builds your portfolio. It, you know, gets you your name out there a little bit more in the, in the market. So Good to know. I'm on my end. Good to know. I'm on Squarespace and struggling with search engines. But uh, for me, you know, it's been it being just me. You know, of course, I could look at the options of outsourcing. Uh, but uh, my goal has been just going into the pages and trying to really be more content focused and make sure those SEO keywords are right, as well as blogging more so that the page is more relevant and focused more. Have I seen the results from that? I, you know, the coin toss is up, yeah. you know, it's only been a couple yeah. of months, but yeah, I mean, I'll definitely look into the WordPress. That's an interesting, um, facet. So yeah, when I'll, you're, I'll, go ahead, Jordan. No, you go ahead. No, I was going to say when, when you're doing your blog, are you also doing a Google post on your Google business account? I'm not, but okay. Would, would recommend doing that. Cause that ties in and then link back to your, um, website. So go into your, your Google business page, um, and just do a post with like a learn more link. Um, cause Google's going to be like, Oh, this business is active. So, I mean, I just searched Jordan just for fun through you during, and I can put some of these things in there so you can see what your ranking is and everything. And Jordan comes up like under the group, the heading of photographers in Nashville and then he's ranked second. So he's on the first page actually twice. Yeah. For what that's worth. So I, I'll say this too with Squarespace. I spent so much time trying to optimize it, keyword it, 
do all the things I possibly could. And it got me very little. And the minute I switched over to WordPress, I shot right up to the first page. Like it was effortless. Um, I, I'll share a couple of the different um, tools that I use that you guys can look into. So like, as far as the theme goes, I use the cadence theme, K-A-D-E-N-C-E. Um, it's like 150 bucks a year, I think. Uh, but it's well worth it in my opinion. I essentially just copied the same design I had on Squarespace and it was fairly simple to set up. Uh, WordPress, somebody asked in the, um, in the, Jared asked in the, in the chat if WordPress is coding still. No, it's, it's really, I mean, you can do coding if you want to, but it's like, it's pretty much drag and drop. They, they tried to set it up similar to Squarespace now. So it's, it's still a clunky interface somewhat. Um, it's a little nerdy, um, but it's more simple to use. And, and that's one of the main reasons I stopped using WordPress years ago was because of how complicated it was and tedious. Now it's a lot more simple to use. So I, I use the Cadence theme. I use a plugin called Rank Math, R-A-N-K Math, M-A-T-H. And that's a, that plugin essentially walks you step by step. It, it shows you everything you need to know about the search engine optimization on your particular website. It ranks everything on your page from the way you're titling things to the amount of words you have, et cetera. And I think that's a free plugin and there is also a paid version. There's a few other plugins I, I use to, to kind of op optimize things. Um, <clears throat> There's one called, um, there's one, it basically shrinks your images, uh, the, the file size of your images. I can't remember what it's called, um, but there's, there's tons of them. And then, uh, th but those, those are the main plugins that helped me with my ranking. And specifically what I did, the other thing is that I did on my site, two main things. I went through and I added alt tags to all of my photos um, using the something some kind of a variation of nashville architectural photographer i would use some variation of that on every single one of my images that way when people do a, a search like for nashville architecture and they, if they're doing an image search my images would show up toward the top as well and then the second thing i did was i created a blog and i was posting on that regularly for about two months ish and that also helped me stay up there and reinforce things. And I, I made some blog searches, or I'm sorry, some blog posts that still get traffic regularly. So Google considers my site relevant because of those. Like for instance, one, one post I made was on architectural photography pricing. Um, so that gets like thousands of hits every month it seems. And Google somehow finds that relevant enough to keep my website up to the top, even though I haven't created many blog posts recently. So I know I just threw a lot at you, but, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully you got something out of that. Hey Jordan, quick question. I know you said you transitioned over. I just made my Squarespace website like a month ago. <laughs> so like how long, I know you said the SEO took you a couple days. Did the transition over to WordPress just take like a, a full day of work or a couple hours? Yeah, it was, I, I, what I did was I exported my Squarespace website to a WordPress file and then I imported it. I imported that file into WordPress. So it gave me a place to start. And then all I had to do was just fix things. I'd say I probably spent like the initial sit down and, and fix things took me a few hours. And then over the course of a few weeks, I would go in and tweak things and and do things but literally it was like the same day i switched everything i remember i posted something in our group uh that i'm, I'm in with steve and a few other people i asked them to test it out where they're at and their locations throughout the country and every single one of them was pulling me up on the first page the day after the day i switched to wordpress and that was without cleaning things up that was without having a bunch of blog posts and i know you just paid for squarespace but it may be worth consider like just you know considering that a loss <laughs> and uh just going right into wordpress i mean you get one job and it pays for it right yeah so i think we beat that thing to death unless anybody else has any other questions on have so you gotten any jobs um 
after the move from like people reaching out on Instagram? Uh, through Instagram, I've only gotten real estate work in Nashville. Uh, there's two clients who reached out to me for real estate shoots. And when I moved to Nashville, I, I started charging $500 for real estate shoots. Um, you know, someone, uh, Jared asked if I could share that podcast again, view your photos. They also have a Facebook group, which is really handy as well. But yeah, no, I haven't gotten anything through Instagram. I, I definitely reached out and introduced myself to some people on Instagram, but um, and, and look, I'm not saying that like, I, I'm the guy who sits there and complains that I don't get enough work. So I'm not, I'm not like getting work left and right. I've gotten uh, off the top of my head. I've gotten six architectural, exclusively architectural shoots since January, but they've all been through SEO. I sh I shoot mainly for interior designers and they all find me through other interior designers in the area. Um, and I guess my thing is like, I want to start doing some more high end and architecture work. So it kind of seems like I might need to make the transition over from mostly Instagram referrals over to the web referrals with the SEO. I mean, do both. I mean, you know, anybody talking print pieces anymore. What's that? Anybody talking print pieces? Anybody do putting anything in print to send out? Yes, but it hasn't done anything for me yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, our buddy Nate, he does uh, print pieces. He sends out a catalog, or not necessarily a catalog, but like a brochure to local architects, um, just kind of like showing his work and his consistency. And it's paid off really well for him. But also Nate is kind of like a whole other level of anybody that I know. So you yeah. kind of see that work and just be like, I have to have this sort of thing. Um, but it's worked out really well for him. Wasn't he doing postcards? He was, and he switched over to like a catalog. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was. Doing, oh, sorry. I was. Oh, go ahead. I was say I'm designing an eight by eight little uh, small catalog brochure type thing, limited press print run. Not a lot of them, just enough to you know send out to a very targeted list because I don't want to. The question, you know, how many people are actually in the office? How many people are actually receiving these? If you don't have direct contact with them, is it just ending up on a desk or anything? You know, so so or they just might be leave behind. Here, here's the thing i know it will work admittedly i've been somewhat lazy about it i printed out a hundred of those books and i only i've only actually delivered like seven <laughs> uh mainly because in the book i have an introduction and about you and it says it talks about how i just moved to nashville and then long story short i'm not going to get onto this call but we actually left ash or nashville and moved to Asheville, north carolina so I haven't delivered those books because I don't, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that yet, but I do know they work based on like, like what Andrew is saying, uh, Nate sheets. He, he was even telling me about how, how well his have done. Um, I, I know they work. I've heard others do the same thing and they work. Adam Taylor printed out some, and I know he's gotten work from them. I've gotten, I, I yeah, printed out some. Yeah, yeah. I printed out some nine by sixes for uh, luxury real estate, and I've gotten some calls from those. Oh, you know, I, I lied. I did get, now that I think about it, I did get, when I was still in Minnesota, I sent out a bunch of books, and I did recently get a call, and it was, it was a year and a half ago. It was, it was like two months after COVID hit, so about two years ago. Uh, when I sent, I sent out like 30 or 40 books. I forgot about this. And I like a few, about a month ago, I got, I finally got a call from one of those. So almost two years later, I got a call off of <clears throat> Minnesota. Jordan, I just asked in the chat if you can share kind of maybe, yeah, where you used. Um, one thing that's actually been surprisingly successful for me is LinkedIn. Um <laughs> especially with like architecture firms and interior design firms and stuff because the company then you know if you post on there a lot of times the company will repost it um 
And that just helps get your name out there with other architects, because a lot of times architects follow architects, interior designers follow interior designers on LinkedIn. Um, and when you like something on LinkedIn, it shows up on their feed. So they'll see that and your name and stuff. Whereas on Instagram, a lot of times it's just photographers liking other photographers stuff. Mm. Um, you know, for, you know, one of my architecture and interior design clients, you know, I'm now, um, you know, I've now connected and linked with the CEO of a couple of different major architecture firms. Um, and I've, you know, been able to connect that way with other, with architects and interior designers and stuff. And so that's just been a good way to kind of continue to get my name out there. And hopefully that'll, you know, it hasn't led to a lot of business, but I'm hoping that as that kind of continues to, to grow that, you know, as my name's out there, that architect will be like, oh, that's right. I see Adam's stuff all the time. We're connected on LinkedIn. I should use him for this project that I'm just finishing up. I know Steve, Steve, I, I'm not to put you on the spot, but you want to talk about your LinkedIn approach? Oh yeah. I, I love LinkedIn. Um, <clears throat> especially now with how Instagram is where it's not even considered like a, uh, photography platform anymore. It's kind of like a video real thing, but I find LinkedIn to be great because, um, uh, like I post, uh, I'll put, I do a lot of, um, commercial developments and like, I'll post like, uh, like seven or eight photos. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'll post like seven or eight photos from that shoot. And um, Lily, Lily, Lily. Oh, thank you. Sorry, my <laughs> daughter's learning to be potty trained. Uh, I'll post uh, like seven or eight photos from like a set. And um, the inevitably what will happen is the architect will see and they'll want um, to either license the images or work with me in the future, the interior designer, same thing. And it just kind of like snowballs from there. Um, and yeah, I was uh, originally, I would go on like LinkedIn and see who my client was tagging. And then based on that, like the companies that they were tagging from shoots that I did. And based on that, I go on LinkedIn and just kind of like go through the people that worked at those companies that were tagged um, and then see if I had any like second connections that I can uh, start a conversation up with because I'd, I'd rather make an introduction if I knew I had somebody that kind of give me like a soft landing spot or at least tell me who I should be talking to first. Um, but I, I found LinkedIn to, to be the best platform to make introductions, especially for somebody like me who uses Squarespace because he has no interest in doing anything about his website except for uploading photos from time to time. Yeah, and Steve, I'll, I'll say that too, like your point, wow, like they always like tag, you know, whether it's the people who did the glass on the building and all this stuff. So, I mean, it's a really easy way to find your way in to get some additional licensing too, because you can kind of figure out who some of the partners were. Um, LinkedIn. So yeah, I've definitely also had success with, with the licensing thing too, through LinkedIn. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know what, for me, it's like, you don't have to, you don't have to cycle through all the people that are just on there like giving you like heart emojis and shit like that it's actually like it's actually legitimate connections and like exactly. it, people are there for business and nothing else exactly well i'm going on mute she's talking too much <laughs> and you have a bird situation happening there apparently <laughs> Uh, Jared asked, how long was it before you all landed your first architectural job? I've been shooting real estate for just five years now, and I'm still struggling to land one. Um, actually, my first shoot was more architectural uh, before I started doing real estate. I just didn't realize I was, it's hard to explain, but I didn't realize I was doing architectural photography at the time. Because I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else. It was just a business asking me if I could shoot their um, it's like a yoga studio. They asked me if I could shoot their, their office for them. And I was like, sure. And I, you know, I brought lights in and everything. Um, I, I, I was shooting weddings and portraits at the time. <clears throat> um, and actually now that I think about it, it was even before that I was still in Ohio, I was still living in Ohio and there was a company that hired me to shoot some restaurants. And those were my first shoots. Those were in like 2008. So I, I didn't consider them architectural photography because I just, figured I was shooting restaurants. Like I didn't think of it as architectural photography and I didn't start doing real estate photography until 2011. How about you guys? Anybody else want to share? Like 
how long did it take you before you were able to do your first? It, it, well, for those of you who came from shooting real estate or are still shooting real estate, did you find it? Did you find it to be? If, a if no one else wants to talk, I'll I'll, I'll talk yeah, again. Go for it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I did real estate for for a number of years first, and just. Um, it, it, I felt like it was definitely like a process because I mean, shooting real estate is very, very different than shooting for architects and interior designers. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, it was just like, I, I think part of it too is when you get the opportunity with a real estate shoot to do the best you can with it and kind of treat it more like an architecture interior design shoot when when the time allows. So that way you can kind of start to, to build up your portfolio that way. Um, and for anyone who's kind of looking to, to do that, I had a podcast going during COVID, me and everybody else. Um, and I don't know, I, I talked to Barry McKenzie, who's a pretty well-known dude in the industry. Um, and we talked about um, transitioning from kind of residential real estate stuff to, to kind of more commercial architecture, interior design, photography. And so I can put that link um in the chat if anyone's interested in listening to me and Barry ramble for an hour or so oh did you have was it on YouTube were you doing a podcast for a while yeah it was it was a video and oh I remember that yeah I do remember that okay see I'm connecting did you are you still doing that or what what did you uh um it's kind of fallen by the wayside I probably should pick it back up people seem to like that one and some of the other ones we did kind of about editing and pricing and stuff but anyways but if anyone's interested i'll put the link in the chat for at least yeah. if you want to me and barry ramble for a little bit yeah put it on the chat i did about three years of interior design photography and then some realtors um reached out to me and i just started shooting for them just kind of on the side i don't love doing real estate but it, to me it's kind of quick easy mindless money to make <laughs> from time to time yeah. so that was kind of my starting with design and then ended up in a little bit of real estate. I kind of dodged the real estate bullet. Um, I got hired on at an architecture firm to do graphic design and environmental signage. And uh, being a lifeline photographer, mostly a photojournalist, when I, when I got doing this, I wanted to be a photojournalist, uh, but I'm sure you guys know newspaper photography isn't exactly thriving. So uh, I started doing other different commercial work and Ended up get, doing graphic design work and got a job at an architecture firm. Actually knew nothing about tilt shift other than that's what you needed to use. And so I said, yeah, I know tilt shift lenses. I can do that. And uh, here I am seven years later. So uh, yeah, I, I got lucky, but I still shoot a little real estate on the side. Um, but I echo like the few people I have hired to shoot with me um, that have real estate and stuff like that. It's mostly... How do you make that, you know, you find a higher end real estate, you photograph it like an, it's an architectural project. You find the vignettes, you find the details, you think about it one point perspective, you think about your frames, not just your snap, your shots and get out. Also time of day, because real estate, you're like, oh, I can do this at 12 noon, who cares? You know, unless you get somebody to pay for the twilight rate or something, but make sure you do it, so. I just want to also chime in. There's like nothing wrong. With I, I love real estate. I love shooting real estate. I, I don't like the grind of it, but I love the business of it. I, I think it's fun. It's interesting. It's challenging. Um, that said, I don't want to actually be doing it, but, but I still enjoy it. You know, like when, when I moved to Nashville, I just, I still wanted to do it, but I only wanted to shoot higher end stuff. So I started charging like an outrageous rate. Um, for Jared though, like, I think I, I would almost just ask you back, like, what all have you done so far to try and get new business? I mean, there's, I, I don't know about your market or where you're at or anything like that, but I know there's probably a number of things we could all suggest for you to, really? to, uh, to help you out to get your first client. So I know you said you don't have audio, but if you figure out a way to do it, chime in and tell us what you're, what you've done and we can, um, we can try and help you out. Yeah. I wanted to chime in and say, I shoot a lot of real estate. Like my, my, 
whole career has mostly been focused around it um, for like 16 years now. And I, these days, um, treat my real estate jobs as if they're architectural. I only book out full days. You know, I'm, I'm very intentional with my lighting and compositions. I think most people would look at my work and not automatically assume that I'm just doing real estate. But, um, unless you know, I know you. unless they know me. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it can be extremely lucrative, especially depending on where, where you are. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be in Southern California by the coast and stuff. So I have lots of great properties to shoot and clients with deep pockets, but you know, you can very easily transition that in the way that like say Steve was networking on LinkedIn by just, you find out who's involved in these projects. You know, you're shooting new constructions. You've got these high-end designers, you've got um, well-known architects, you just get in front of them. You know, this led to me getting a lot of my architectural clients. Um, these days, I still, I say I'm like 75% real estate right now. Um, but yeah, I, I just have to treat every project like I'm going to pitch it to the architect because that's the, basically what I'm planning on doing with it anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I used to, I would say last year, I probably did not want to work with any realtors anymore um and then actually going to pfr you kind of changed that for me it's it's not that i don't want to work with any realtors it's i don't want to work with people that don't value the creativity and art uh artistry that i bring to the table um so just like hold on keep I just like andrew i i'm only doing full day rates and i i probably only work with like three realtors right now but they respect me for what i'm doing um it's just Daddy, oh my god hold on <laughs> while he's while he's stepped away i'm gonna read jared's comment i live in a very rural area 13601 zip code i i'm not gonna look that up if somebody wants to look that up uh, there seems to be only a few architecture firms in the area but from what i've seen they just use either in-house someone with a camera or hired generic photographer i've reached out on ig here and there a couple emails but I've only got, I love your work. We'll keep you in mind. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm going to look up your zip code really quick. Make me work for it, Jared. I'll just chime in about like reaching out with people. Cause I kind of did that consistently for a while. Um, and I would like send a LinkedIn message and then send them like an email with the link to portfolio and then always follow up like three or four weeks later. And I wouldn't say I've gotten a ton of work from it, but it has worked. And sometimes someone will like email you like six months later or a year later. So I think you just have to make like a very big list. And like, I like made myself a rule, like send 10 a week. And I was mostly doing interior designers. And I would say I have more luck with people who like are newer designers, or it seems like they don't use you know, an architectural photographer, um, like they were just shooting it themselves or with people who seem like they try different people. Um, okay, so Jared, I, I looked up your zip code, Glen Park, New York. It looks like just in Glen Park, your population is about 38,000. I'm sure you, there's a greater metro area. <clears throat> um, so I'll say this, I lived in I based, I lived in Minnesota for a long time, um, 12 years or something like that. And I, I, I lived where Little House on the Prairie took place. So I lived in a very small town. I think the greater metro area was about 60,000 people. Um, there was two commercial architecture firms in the area. Well, three technically, but one of them is useless. Um, the one used in-house photographers, the other one hired a photographer from, they were more of a regional firm, but they hired a photographer from the next city over. Uh, there were two custom home builders in the area. There was like, it, you know, Pinterest interior designers. There was like maybe two interior designer firms. Um, my, my point is I, I hardly had any potential clientele in the area. So what I essentially did was uh, when COVID hit, I drove around my city and I took exterior photos of all of the interesting commercial architecture in the area. And uh, I, I learned what 
looks like how light reflects off certain facades off of buildings off of glass like where the best directionality of the sun would be for certain buildings and like there were some buildings that go back three or four times just to figure out what the best time of day was and i would shoot those and i would send them to the architecture firm saying hey uh, just an fyi or I, I, actually one of them i actually even i i recorded a, a time lapse of me editing this complicated photo and posted on instagram and tagged them long story short i ended up working for them and then they hired me for like more shot more shoots after that um so there's there's things you can do proactively it's going to involve you doing some free shoots you you said that you have reached out to them multiple times and they've responded saying i love your work we'll keep you in mind but you're 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 kind of leaving it up to them i think you might need to you might need to take a more proactive approach maybe even doing like a free shoot for them um i know that there's going to be a school of thought out there where people like doing a free shoot is not <clears throat> the right way to do things i'm going to tell you it's it's probably wise to do a free shoot especially if you've been trying and they're aware of you and they're still not hiring you the only way you're going to get in front of them is by uh, by giving them something um and there's, there's no shame in it either i would not discount what you do but doing something for free or shooting on spec meaning you say you, you know you'll shoot them if they want to use them they can license them from you that's another way you can you can do things that's the way i did it with all these commercial um shots that i did but anyway my, my whole point is that strategy led to this firm this regional firm that i had been trying to get to hire me for years they finally started hiring me over this other photographer that they're hiring from the next city over i ended up doing six shoots for them in, a, in the course of a year and a half and that led to like a couple other um commercial builders hiring me for shoots all because i went out and i proactively shot these commercial exteriors and not to mention i got a portfolio piece i'll also say i'm pretty sure that that's how i got work in nashville and that's how my seo helped because when i first moved to nashville i spent a lot of time driving around the city and taking doing the same essential basic strategy that i did in minnesota i just took some uh like solid photos of some noteworthy architecture in downtown nashville posted those to the blog and i made a blog series out of it that went out every week um, I know that had I not had photos of downtown Nashville, I probably wouldn't have got the SEO juice from it. And these firms probably wouldn't have hired me. They, you know, so you, it sounds like you just, I know I'm rambling, but you, you kind of have to just be a little bit more proactive in what you're doing instead of waiting for them to call you and hire you. I'll, I'll try and help a little bit. I, I'll, I'll back up the spec work thing. I, you know, I'm not a big fan of doing free work. I think every work, but Spec work, I'm, I'm totally on board. I've picked out a few projects that I'm like, okay, I want to get to know this client. I have not been able to bridge the gap with either finding who, who they are or getting much interest beyond, yeah, they, we like your work and that's it. So finding a project that you like of the firm, going out and shooting it and then just offering it on the back end saying, hey, look at these great pictures I shot of your project. If you're interested in them, I'll license them for X dollars. And sure, it's probably less than your day rate. Right? You may sell them for 250, 300 an image, but they're then using your pictures and you're that much closer to being the next person they call. So spec work has helped me on a few projects for sure. I know that for any of y'all that follow Jordan, I mean, Adam Taylor, he, uh, he recently moved to Hawaii and it seems like that's kind of what he did a lot of when he got there. He just went out and shot new buildings and started tagging, you know, architects and um, builders. And he was also proactively sending them the photos saying, check these out. Um, and I know for certain that he got a few, like he reached out to kind of like going back to Jared's situation. He messaged them through or through Instagram. They said, we like your work. We'll, we'll be in contact maybe in the future. We'll keep you in mind. But they already had their photographer. And then Adam took these banging exterior photos of some of their noteworthy architecture in Hawaii. And they're like, okay, you're hired. And he's been shooting for them now. So it, it definitely works. I feel like Andrew, you were going to say something or were you not? Yeah. There's just a lot of, uh, we were muting when there's a lot of <laughs> stuff happening in the background as well. But, uh, yeah, so I live in a town of 3,000 people. Like, I live in a tiny little town. 
And um, my my general clientele is like 90 minutes to two hours away. And, um, you know, that's just fine as long as you can get people to be consistent with your day rate and your day rate is worth it. Um, I don't think that, that you should um, limit your your clientele to someone like within a, a small radius because it can definitely be worth your while. I 100% agree. In fact, my, my city, uh, my, the nearest large city from me was an hour away. Um, and even right now I moved to Asheville. I'm still marketing myself as a commercial architecture photographer in Nashville because this is where all the development is happening. And there's not, there's no development. There's hardly any development happening in Asheville. So I'm not even bothering marketing there. It's I'm, it's five hours away, but this is, this is where I'm marketing myself. Um, I'm not sure why you're worried about the, uh, the move with your books you made. You just have to white out one letter. You made it pretty easy on yourself. <laughs> that's true. Well, no, actually, I'd have to add a letter because it's A-S- A-S-H-E-ville. Jerks. Yeah. Um, Kyle asks, what is the best way to find out who the architect is for a building in your city? This is a solid question. And uh, some of you who have been on a past call may have seen this. I've, I've shared this resource before. I'm going to share my screen really quick. Oops. This is what I'm shooting today. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So this is called Emporis, E-M-P-O-R-I-S. And this site is a solid website. Um, all you do is you search your city. So I'm going to search Nashville. Uh, let me start. Dude, just Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. And it shows all of the buildings that are registered within this site. There's 629 buildings registered on the site. 505 of them are existing. 15 of them are under construction, etc. Gives you some information on tallest buildings, building types, etc. Okay. The beauty about this website, I'll zoom in a little bit more, is if I were to go and you can see these color codings, like green is existing, purple is under construction, blue is planned. If I go to all buildings, and this is free by the way, it tells you all the different sites and okay, we know that we can sort, we can uh, look at the year. So let's see, Four Seasons Hotel and Residence. This one is near completion. If I click on it, <clears throat> I can see the civil, the architect, I can see the civil engineer, interior designer. Uh, if you want to pay a small fee, you can see all this information as well. Developer, interior designer, structural engineering. And it has all this information about the different buildings. Um, I can go to a random city. So let's just search like San Francisco. There's a lot of, I can't spell it, San Francisco. Did I spell it wrong? San Fran, jeez. How do you spell San Francisco? Never mind. Los Angeles. With it. With it. <laughs> Los Angeles, California. Okay. So you can see there's 3,700 buildings registered here. Um, and again, if you look at the, the dates, like this one's going to be planned. This one's going to be finished in 2023, this Figuera Center or whatever. And I can see that the architect of record is this Callison RTKL or whatever. So I can be proactive, start reaching out to them. I can find who the, the marketing contact is or the communication contact is on LinkedIn and reach out to them. Uh, use Steve's method to see if you have any common connections that are like one or two people apart and start reaching out. Um, Thank you for the tip. That's a great resource. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I just recently moved to Los Angeles. So there you go. I'm going to be using this. Reach yeah, out to these you. guys. And then what was, what was that city that I said Jared was in again? Glenn or what was it? Syracuse. Syracuse. Okay. Just out of curiosity. Curiosity. I'll probably spell that wrong. Nope. All right. So there's 318 buildings. There's only one under construction and one plan. So if we go into all buildings here and we look for those. Okay, so the Jacob. This must said it was supposed to be finished in 2020, so there must be delays in opening. 
but I can see that. Yeah, there's so developer Mark Congle plans to build a 10 story. So there's the developer information. So you could reach out to the developer, but it sounds like this is going to be like a project that isn't going to try to guess. Let's see. So we can find that one that's in purple. There's one under construction. It's still worth it to hit up the clients that are not under that are already built. That no, that that you know what you're absolutely right. So, like so, for instance, you might look at a building that was recently completed, re relatively new. Um, a lot of these are very old. Let's see, 2018, 2019. So this standard at Syracuse was built in 2019. You can. Yeah, they don't have the developer information public, so you can you probably have to pay like five bucks to see it if you wanted to. But just out of curiosity, you can look up this building. Let's do some basic research and just see if there's good photos of it. Um, I see a rendering. This might be a photo. It's definitely not an architecture photo, but you can see there's not any like solid photos at first glance of this building. So it might be worth just going to that building, shooting it, get some good angles of it and do some, do some research, figure out the, who the developer is. Oh, it says unbuilt. It was canceled. Never mind. Hopefully you get the point. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this, but hopefully that was, uh, that was helpful. Also, uh, I would say that it's very important to to do personal work. I've been hired in the past a lot because of my personal work. Because, um, of course, clients want to see your, your website and everything. But if you have, like, a strong personal work, they have, like, a different vision of your work and how you manage things and how you approach different um architecture so i would definitely recommend to have always like personal work in your website or even if you send out a catalog or whatever it is it's important to have that presence as well what was your personal personal work that you were doing oh uh, well when i when i travel i always try to find a personal work so for example, I did a, 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 I was in um, South Korea in 2013, and I was impressed with the uh, with a lot of bridges that, that were there. So I did a personal project about that, and um, and a lot of people liked that project, and actually ended up like uh, being in an exhibition, you know, uh, because I also do like fine art photography, mm -hmm. but at the same time. I was using those images to promote my architectural work as well and, and, and that work. A source, Sam said, a source I use for finding firms <clears throat> and project architects is the Business Journal Network has most major cities and lists top firms and businesses. Business Journal Network. Yeah, so they've got a Nashville, they've got, you know, most major, they've got an Albany, New York, so that's probably the biggest upstate New York one to, for Jared. But if you become a member, they give you a list in leads section and like every couple of months they do different industries. So yearly in Denver, there's like an architectural leads and they'll show the top 10, 15, 20 firms by revenue, including their major projects. And so it gives you a good idea of really who the biggest firms are in any major metropolitan area. And uh, if you subscribe to the whole network, I can see firms in any city across the country and uh, at least know who are the big players in that region um, and then start from that list and work from there. That's good to know. Yeah, like Nashville's got one and uh, Raleigh Durham, you know, has one. So, you know, you can find your region. It's usually kind of like by state or major metro. Yeah, I'm gonna have to dig into this a little bit. Yeah, there's a lot of it's it's all business. So, and on that note, though, but it is dare I say a little more building and you know AEC focused. Mm -hmm. um, so, there is a Steve. I know you're eating, but what was that? What's that website you always refer to? 
Urbanize. Urbanize. I'll pull it up. I know, there's, I know there's one for Los Angeles. I think there's one for Nashville. I'm not sure. I think Chicago. I know there's one not for San Francisco, and that's the closest city for me, which kind of sucks. Denver well, has one called uh, Denver and Phil. Right, so Denver's, you know, it's kind of the same thing. Big list of projects and people. Yeah, Nashville has a private one. I'm actually in talks with this guy. Uh, it's called Nashville Now Next. Um, essentially, let me pull it up here. And this is basically what the urbanized site is too. I think he just kind of copied the idea. Let me share my screen. So this is the site. It's basically, he, um, he writes articles on developments happening in, in the greater Nashville area. So, and he also has sponsors that he's starting to bring on. <clears throat> so he's basically up to date and connected with all the development that's happening in Nashville. And he's starting to really make a name for himself. So I actually have a meeting with him. We've been trying to connect for the last few months, um, but life things have gotten in the way. Uh, but essentially we're going to, I, we want to work together where I will be his like primary photographer and he'll kind of act. I'm, I'm hoping what's going to happen is he'll be able to act as my agent and get me in front of some of these developers he's working with and basically sell my services. Um, and I would essentially give him a 20 to 25% commission off of whatever he sells. Um, so it's, it's, I'm not going to count on it getting me new business, but it's, it's just a good partnership to have. Um, especially if I've got somebody selling my services with me or for me, who knows what's going to happen. We're going to talk about different opportunities. I may even just become a sponsor on his page. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot happening, uh, and he's, he's super well connected. So, and, and this is basically the same concept as that urbanized that Steve was talking about. Um, it's just the, the urbanized site has like five or six different metro areas. Where is this yeah, one? There's, there, there's another one called What Now. Um, what Now? What Now. And they have Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Denver, Houston, Vegas, LA, Miami, New York, Orlando, Philly, Phoenix, San Diego, and San Francisco. I can put it in the link if you want. Yeah. Chat. I'm obviously coming from the Atlanta page, but um, it's it's kind of similar. It's a lot of times, you know, a little bit more locally focused. So it's like, Oh, this restaurant is opening, but again, that's an opportunity to potentially shoot something. Right. Even if it's not necessarily a huge office building. I mean, sometimes it talks about, you know, big home communities or commercial projects. So just another, another resource for people. Yeah. There's, there's about a dozen cities here. So that's good to know. That's the thing too. Like I, one of the things that I'd really like to do, I, I would like to travel more um, a few times a year, at least, at least once a quarter to do commercial architecture work. Um, I, I'm not quite in demand yet. So like nobody's going to be flying me to other cities yet just to, to shoot things. It's happened before, but it's not, I'm just not somebody who's like super in demand. So, but it, it, it wouldn't even hurt to just find projects throughout the country that I think might be interesting to shoot and just throw it out there. All right, we're coming up on an hour on the call. Uh, we can keep it going a little bit longer. Let Steve finish his salad up. Um, <laughs> anybody Has anybody else done anything interesting in terms of marketing or anything that's you found successful like that we haven't really talked about yet that you want to share have any of you guys ever been to uh the palm springs photo festival i'm planning on going i live right outside of palm springs but i haven't been there yet all right i found uh my largest client ever there um, and I found it, it was like a fun week hanging out, shooting the shit, going over, uh, like all the stuff we talk about, right. Licensing, billing. And, uh, 
it just, it got to be one of those things I think you have to go to at least once every few years. It's not strictly like architecture, right? Like I, I feel like I had a friend that went that went for like a portfolio review and he does like, uh, like landscape photography. Yeah. Yeah. It's anything. It's portraiture, you know, all these guys, they've got workshops and everything, but you know, everybody's really, yeah, it's, it's not the same yeah, thing. I done it. I done it in the past and it's pretty awesome. You get to pick between like photo editors, you know, for magazines, um, um, different agents, galleries, uh, it's like, there is a lot of people where you have to pick from. So that's a pretty good insight, actually. Matthew, I'm curious, like, just how, how have you found business in Toledo? This is kind of like inside talk between Matthew and I'm from Toledo originally. And it just, it, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot happening there or are, are the majority of your clients like out of, out of Toledo? Yeah. So I moved here right before the pandemic and uh, I had a, I had a uh, assisting job going in LA. I worked for a guy called Benny Chan. Uh, so I learned a ton of stuff working for him. Um, I never shot real estate. Right. So it was just always architecture. And I moved here and I worked for the collaborative and Thomas Porter, which I think are two of the bigger ones in town. And I hit the ground running somehow. Uh, and then the pandemic hit, it all just went away. Mm. And at the same time, I was talking to this guy who I met, he lives down in Dallas. He's a staff photographer at a company called Corgan. And they were unable to fly to New York City because of the pandemic, but Ohio people could. And I said, hey man, just send me. So everything kind of went from there. Um, there's not, in these small towns, it's really hard. You know, the collaborative has, I think eight principles. So you're looking at at least eight projects a year, hopefully going on, but you don't know how many are actually photographable per year. Right. Uh, you go to these big cities where you've got, you know, a firm with 20, 30 principles and you're looking at just rotating jobs. Um, so, you know, the, the volume from a single source can be really large, but you don't really find that in small towns. Yeah, that, that was, that was my, and that's one of the reasons we moved to Nashville. It's like, you, you kind of have to just go where the work is. I mean, I, I heard, a, I don't know how true it is, but I heard a rumor that 40% of the construction cranes in the country are in Nashville. There you go. Because, because everything like this, this area is being, there's no state income tax here. So all these companies are moving here. In fact, that's how I got my first large job here, a global financial firm to move their headquarters here. And that was a pretty noteworthy project. And yeah, so you, you kind of have to go where the work is. I mean, in Jared's case, in a town of like 30,000 people with hardly any new projects going up, it's, it's going to be tougher to break into like commercial architecture. And I'm guessing if, if that's the the if that's the population, you probably don't have a lot of residential architecture or interior opportunities, maybe some custom home builders, maybe some small time developers, uh, maybe commercial real estate, but you're probably going to have to go to Syracuse or some a larger m metro area to get, to get the work that if you want to, that you want to do. Yeah. You need more in an area with more churn, right? Like in yeah. LA in, in a five-year period, I was in, you know, a few offices twice, which is kind of crazy for a uh, commercial type lease. Hmm. But then, you know, in those small towns too, like here, I'm working on a personal project, uh, photographing spaces that have made Toledo what it is. And for all you out there, Toledo is the home of the Jeep, right? I mean, that's our claim to fame. Uh, so we have this crazy history here, a lot of, you know, late 1800s, early 1900s buildings. Um, and that has been an eye opener to, uh, meeting the commissioner of, uh, economic development for the city of Toledo and meeting the mayor, uh, meeting three different big developers who, you know, have gone on to say, Hey, look, like you said, you know, shoot it on spec and they give you a few hundred dollars for the pictures. Uh, you know, you, you can always find a story to tell where you are. It's just hard to then make money selling the image. There was a, that, that's a good, that's a good point. Actually, there was a project idea that I had 
where I was going to, and I never did it. And I, I'd like to again someday, but I want to go, you know, how, like you go into like uh, most cities have like his, a historic area and they have like older Victorian homes or like just old things where they'll do like reenactments and whatnot. I always thought it'd be kind of neat to do a like, personal project where it's like an interior architecture shoot of like a period piece like go into an old victorian home hire some reenactors and light it up and stage it and make it look like a like almost even do like a cinemagraph but just make like a period piece um yeah. but i don't know just like doing personal projects like that that could be that could be another strategy strategy to take jared maybe it's not traditional commercial architecture or residential architecture but you know maybe it's something where you get together with the city and you're doing like infrastructure or something interesting there's there's um what's his name uh a good instagram account to follow that i like that i like following it's uh chris chris yeah christopher Payne photo he's based in new york but his work is architectural but it's also like it's industrial um really really cool photography uh, but he goes into a lot of factories um he goes into i don't know it's you, you just kind of have to look at his account i'll pull it up or I'll, I'll tag it in the in the thing here yeah you, you, but all this to say you just kind of have to think outside of the box and consider doing something a little less traditional if you're limited in your area i think his work is is very good yeah i like his work yeah, it's impressive. I put it in the chat. Uh, Jared also asked, I see too that on Emporus, you can purchase images. Do you know who you're purchasing images from? Honestly, don't bother. Like th this, don't bother with that. Like you'd be better off licensing your own photos. Um, I, I don't know any details about that, but chances are they're not, they're not paying what you could earn if you just tried licensing them individually. All right, so we talked about, let's see, SEO, creating books, print collateral, talked about being proactive, searching, uh, searching out companies to, um, through LinkedIn, through Instagram, doing personal projects, doing stuff on spec quite a bit of uh different things people are trying i mean i'm hoping that everybody had can take away at least one thing that they found helpful that they can try just to i don't know all, the, the nice thing is all these things are things you can do this week like it's nothing you have to you know you don't have to I don't know. You don't have to wait long to do it. You can go into your town and, and find places to shoot. You can spend an hour on LinkedIn. You can, you can do all these things, but does anybody have any other thoughts or any other things they've done they can share? Or we can just talk about anything else you guys want to. We don't have to talk about this topic. Yeah. One thing I'll share. Um, when I started my photography business, I wasn't only doing architecture. Um, but I joined a weekly networking group and that did a lot for me. There's organizations called like BNI or AmSpirit that basically just meet every week with a bunch of different professionals and um, you're the only professional for your category in the group. So I was the only photographer um, and people honestly love to refer folks that they know and trust. And so it was really easy for me. I had a group of like 30 people who would just go out into their network every week and just talk to people and shoot the shit. And, you know, if they found that somebody needed a photographer, they would pass my name on. So a couple of my bigger architectural clients now that I've gotten, um, you know, designers and builders have come just word of mouth from people that know people in my city. So I would say that's a, a real good way to do it. Um, I've gotten a lot of stuff from just in-person networking, just going to business events. I find that there's not even a lot of photographers there. It's really easy to pass business cards and, um, you know, just meet people, talk about what they do. Don't necessarily talk about what you do. Uh, I'll add that only do that if you're not socially awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Because if you like, if you're socially awkward, that could be off-putting. Like yeah, I'm not, I'm true. not, I'm not one that can go to a networking event and just start talking to people. Usually, I have to at least know one person or like have some kind of icebreaker. I don't know how to walk up and start talking to people. Um, I, I just, I suck at it. I get nervous and I, I stutter a lot, and I just, I, I look like a moron. So networking events have never been good for me unless I'm with somebody I know and they can introduce me and, you know, help me talk. Or if I've been, had a couple drinks in me. Yeah. A good caveat that I've had is I'm actually photographing some of those events mm -hmm. for like the organizers, which could be chambers of commerce or like um, business editorials in town that host events. Like tomorrow night, I'm shooting a commercial ad design awards. And you can be sure that I'm going to have all my business cards and books with me <laughs> to hand out to people and just introduce myself. I've already got a camera in my hand. So it's like they trust me. They're there getting an award for um, or from an editorial that they trust. And that editorial hired me. So, um, you know, it's kind of an in because I'm, I'm a little bit introverted like that as well. I don't really just walk into groups and talk to people. But um, if I'm shooting, I'm, I'm pretty open at that point. It's easier to talk. I'll add something to that, Kyle. Um, AIA um, also does happy hour events sometimes. So um, obviously it's usually just a bunch of architects getting together and talking, but you never know what other vendors and stuff might be there. So again, if you're not socially awkward, buy someone a beer, be casual, might, might pay off. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good point. AIA, check into your, your regional AIA chapter and see if what the cost is to join. Um, I, I will say this, depending on where you're at, it might be, it might be worthless. Um, in Minnesota, I, was, I, I joined AIA and it was very valuable. I was able to join some committees. Um, I got in front, uh, there's monthly calls and I got in front of architects every month and got on a first name basis with them. Um, in Tennessee, it's absolutely useless. They, there's like nothing, they don't do anything for anybody here. Um, I haven't looked into North Carolina yet because uh, I, I, I don't plan on shooting much in North Carolina. Uh, so just something, something worth looking into to see what options your, your, your regional AIA chapter offers um also agc or um associated general contractors you know hmm. same thing you know it's not always just architects i do plenty of work that i don't want to be doing but you know construction industry work i shoot for a pipeline company they they install new pipelines before the buildings come in and we go out and shoot their teams working and headshots and i make good money doing that type of work so anything in the whole aec spectrum and that you know so general contractors, pipeline companies, engineers, anybody who fits into that realm is, you know, so same thing. I shot an event for an ACG event or associated AGC, associated general contractors, and they have outfits throughout the country as well. And I shot an event for them, shook a few hands, got to know some of the company leaders, not architects, but they're the companies that build the architects buildings and it's a start. So you bring up a really good point. I think that's another thing. We, we see everybody posting on Instagram and we see all these things. And when we think of the type of work we want to be doing, we, th we, we tend to think we need to be shooting. And I'm guilty of this. And it's something I'm, I'm learning quickly now. Um, we tend to, and maybe I'm not speaking, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but we tend to get trapped in this mindset of if I'm not shooting cool architecture, I'm not I suck at architecture and photography. I'm not, I'm not, you know what I mean? Or, or like, I'm, I don't know. I'm not a real architecture photographer or I'm not getting any work. Like we discount all the, we, this is a business first and foremost. I think we need to sometimes stop romanticizing being an architectural photographer and shooting cool projects and take and just get cool work. It's a, it's a business or not cool work, just work in general. It's, yeah. It is a business. But yeah, shooting, no one, only people only know what you shot by what you show them right right exactly like shooting pipelines 
it sounds boring, but you know what? You know, you never know what that's going to lead to. Plus, it's money. It's money in your pocket. Hey, Thirty six hundred bucks for the day. So I was yeah. like, yeah, I'll go for a red pipeline. Right. Yeah. You don't have to. Sh- you don't have to share it on Instagram. And sounds know. like a sweet job too. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was great. I was just, you know, but that type of work and like to kind of continue on that. I, I fly drones a lot, and a lot of times my drone work is not super sexy. It's put the drone up 150 feet, shoot views from every direction so that we can go to the developer and say, hey, this is going to be the view from the 15th story. Right now, it's a dirt parking lot. I also do a lot of render back plates. You know, what is this lot going to look like in a year? Go put the camera at this height at this time of the day. We want everything around the property. Yes, it's just a parking lot right now, but we want to be able to put the render in. I make a good chunk of money doing reference imagery, render back plates, drone site imagery. How do you fi- how do you find that kind of work or is that just all referral based on your experience? I am really it, I have a I've developed a bit of experience with that and I've done a few videos where we've done some high elevation aerial matchups. Um, that's gotten some kind of attention. Um, I working closely with the architect has kind of I work closely with one architecture firm. I think somebody was saying it earlier, you know, I, I'm calling you guys from Albuquerque, but I do 80% of my architecture work in Denver. It's a six hour drive. I go once a month and I hammer out projects every single day. And uh, I mean, I was up there, so I built time and I know my clients and I have a good repertoire with them. Um, but yeah, so sometimes it just comes down to that basic work. It's nothing exciting, but it's stuff the firms need. And it's not always the highest dollar because you have to be understanding that, you know, they could just send somebody out there with a DSLR to just go shoot some pictures, but I'd rather than pay me, you know, a few hundred dollars to go do it. So mm. it is business and money, yeah. uh, work is work. And somebody wants to pay me to go shoot photos, uh, I'll go do it. Pipelines or empty parking lots, or is it what's on my website? No, but is it what helps seal the deal or puts me, you know, my kind of saying is we help from concept to completion you know, we, we work with the architects or firms all the way back to where they're thinking about the building before it even comes into reality and then photograph the final project. I, I think uh, I, you don't necessarily have to shoot stuff you don't want to shoot, but what right. you're doing, what you're doing is still in the same realm. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're still connecting with things that could, you know, five years down the road when I'm projects are weddings know. and family portraits. And I, I, I basically only do B2B business. I don't do business, you know, B2C consumer stuff. I got out of that several years ago. Yeah. I, you know, I prefer to work with businesses, even if that's not the most glorifying work, it's all part of the bigger picture. Now, not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying give up on the trying to shoot the sexy stuff, but you know. The boring stuff leads to the sexy stuff sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so my question to you guys is because, I just went through this. Uh, I had an article written about a job that I did. And I think that was like a massive marketing element, right? And I mean, I've shot a bunch of stuff, you know, slept on couches to work and everything. And I finally got this cool job. I thought it was cool. So I sent it to uh, AP Almanac. You guys follow that? Yeah. Yeah. So they wrote, uh, I shot uh, LaGuardia Airport under construction and then completed. Nice. And they, they wrote it. Lexi is a great writer. She wrote a story about it, uh, my experience, and kind of meshing the two uh, visits together. And that was like, you know, something that, you know, I feel like I worked hard to get. I finally got, and I was really proud of it. I pitched it. It got taken. And I do feel like I didn't get a massive bump in you know, exposure or whatever, but I got a really good bump. So have you guys ever done anything like that? Like reached out, like actively uh, sought publication, uh, you know, anywhere, right? It could be magazines, could be websites, could be uh, shared stuff on, you know, a social site. Yeah, I was, I was published on AP Almanac. Um, you know, things like things that are industry related or adjacent do help seo if you're linked back um i've tried reaching out to like dwell and like magazines those are like i don't know i guess i'm i'm more trying to focus on commercial architecture at this point um so residential doesn't excite me as much 
Um, so do you, are you looking at like interior design? Uh, well, I mean, like for, I, I, I'm looking at more commercial architecture. So like there's like Architizer, there's Archinect, there's different like online publications for architecture, like commercial architecture specific that right. I'm kind of putting more energy into. Like uh, you can create a profile on like Archinect, for example, and you can post some of your projects and, you know, architects hang out there, commercial architects. Um, Architizer has like the architecture, the architecture photography awards that just wrapped up um my submissions did not get selected <laughs> um but still it's like you know it, it's it's worth putting the time and energy into doing that uh one of the things i put on my website uh on my contact form uh that's actually been kind of insightful and i think helpful and maybe has even helped me get some contacts is one of the questions i put on my contact form is what publications would you like to be published in I'm not promising that I'm going to get them published. I more just want to know like what they're interested in. And I'll give you a good example. Like for the, this, this, this architecture firm who does primarily churches, they said, let's see, their response to that was, let me pull it up here. Church design is one we publish in often. Um, so, but now it's like, I have, I know like, companies who design churches like now i have a an online publication to target whenever i deal with with churches okay you know things like that so so that's i do think there's some merit to submitting online i guess is what I'm, where i'm trying to get at especially if you can get a link back yeah because so, i feel like a lot of these pictures we deliver them and then they just vanish right like yeah you just never see their use or whatever yeah matt um I was actually on a call with Molly Rose earlier and she does a lot of the interior design more on the residential side um, out in California. And if you don't follow her, definitely do. She's super talented and she does kind of, she does really good work. But anyways, she said, so she submits a lot of stuff for magazines, but again, it's, it's on the residential side if, if that's an angle that people are looking for. And she said a lot of this stuff, um, if it's kind of a plan shoot, it's usually six months in advance um, that you need to submit it for a magazine. Um, and a lot of times she'll submit stuff 12 to 18 months before it ever actually gets published. Okay. That usually yours, you know, work through a publicist to try and have them do all the legwork for you on it. And, um, you know, kind of hope for the best because you're going to be competing against tons of other people. So just, another perspective on that that i think it's valuable and it's probably really good for your business i haven't had anything published in you know in one of those big magazines but um you know it's probably really good for your business if you if you can get it but i think it it takes some work and it's something you kind of have to commit to whether that's your own time or find the right publicist who will do all the legwork for you right another, they're, they're kind of like the funnel like the gatekeeper of the idea right yeah Another, uh, what I'm, I'm putting in the chat, Bowerbird. Um, this is a company that will help you get published. Um, full disclosure, I haven't used it yet. I, I tried signing up for them three weeks ago and I still haven't heard back, uh, but I, I have heard some people find success with them. What it is, it's a former architectural photographer and I think somebody who worked in publish, public, pub, uh, publishing and they have they basically just have it, it's I, I from what i understand it, it it is a good resource to get connected to i just haven't gotten connected to it yet i think they have like an application period so like i said i i applied three weeks ago and i haven't heard anything back yet so i, I think they just take a limited amount of people in okay um but it's it's worth it's it's, it's worth looking into at least yeah because i think that's like uh you know the the endless emails stuff like chamber of commerce i felt like i i hit it off pretty well with here in a small town uh i never did the rotary thing but like you're saying you know you're the one person of your uh profession in these in these groups um you know if you live in chicago new york la you're probably fine with your local community but otherwise those internet those national publications or either even regional could be pretty helpful mm-hmm 
from a standpoint of like the residential interior design photography, I've talked to some photographers who have been published and kind of like you're saying about Molly Rose, you know, actually a lot of the photographers I talked with said they take the photos and leave it up to the designer to get published as opposed to like going out on their own and trying to get out meet with all these, you know, publishers and submitting all the photos. So it's been interesting for me because I want to start getting some of my design work published, but I don't have any connections in publishing or anything like that. And a couple of the designers that I've worked with for a long time have gotten a couple of the bigger jobs recently shot by their photographers who have all those connections saying pretty much like I can get you published. Um, so I kind of feel like I'm missing out on some of these bigger jobs that can get published because I don't quite know how to get right from me just posting them online and getting them to the designer. Uh, they don't, there are these designers that don't want me just to say like, I'm in charge of all the, you know, getting the contacts. They want me to do that for them. And I don't quite know how to do that. Yeah, Chris, I, I've run across that as well, too, where I've reached out to people and their, you know, their response is, well, who do you know in what magazines basically to, that you can get my work published for me? Make, makes it challenging. Uh, yeah, I, I think regional magazines, I know Molly's talked a lot about that. I'm pretty good friends with Molly and we talked about it in the past one-on-one -on -one. and uh, I know regional mag, even Stephen Carlish is another good person to talk to you about this. Um, but regional magazines and trade magazines, um, like don't always look at just the big national publications like Dwell and Arc Digest. Like those are challenging to get into unless you've got connections. Um, but like regional magazines are usually a lot easier to get into. I, I, I was published in some regional magazines um, in Minnesota. They didn't lead to anything. And I think I only had one thing that was published online where I actually got a clip back to my website. So it, it's, I think if anything, it's, it's, a, it's a perception management thing. Like if you can talk to a designer or an architect say, hey, I can, I can try and help get you published. It adds value to you as a photographer. So um, not saying, yeah, you know, once you start getting published regularly, that's definitely a value add. Like people are going to hire you just because they, they you're known to be publishing things. So something to think about. All right. I'm going to wrap it up because I have to get Chipotle before they close. <laughs> I need to eat. Yeah. It. I was going to get PF Chang's, but they closed at nine. I'm kind of I'm a little disturbed <laughs> by that. So yeah chipotle it is All but right. uh i'm really glad everybody was able to jump on um like i said i try to do these once a month these public calls um if you guys you know feel free to reach out anytime if you guys have any questions or thoughts about anything be looking out for the next one i i got everybody's email address but i promise you i'm not going to spam you or try to sell you anything it's just for notifications about these calls so um you don't have to worry about signing up for future calls. I'll, I'll email people when there's a new one coming out. And if you, if you can join, cool. If not, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, but hopefully you found this helpful and insightful. I appreciate everybody chiming in too. Um, it's nice to not be the only one talking so much. Thanks for organizing this, Jordan. Appreciate yeah, it. Of course. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, nice talking with you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Jordan. That was great, guys. Night.